so that's really my niche is creating kind of curating the experience, the design, um, the vision for the home uh, that people will like. And I really just base that off of what am I looking for? What are me and my friends looking for when we go booking a place? What stands out about um, the Airbnbs I have booked, I look for? Um, and you can do that too, just scrolling Airbnb. Which ones stand out to you and why? And which one would you book? So I try to create something I would personally want to book. And so that's where really I come in is the front end as and setting up the place. Yeah. And welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast. Hey, I'm your host, Jacob Ayers. Welcome back. This is episode 387. I'm so glad you're here. Happy Monday to you. Well, this week's guests are a tag team Airbnb super host couple, Melissa and Taylor Meek out of Dallas, Texas. I had a really great time talking with them on the podcast today. We talked about their journey, how they got started in the world of short-term rentals, Airbnbs, how they manage their operations, their roles and responsibilities, and not to mention they're still working their full-time day jobs on top of all of this. They are now reaching out to help other people build their Airbnb businesses. So a lot of great content today. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, today, welcome on the show, my good friends from Dallas, Texas, Melissa and Taylor. Hey, guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Jacob. Yeah, we're really excited to be here with you finally. Yeah, nice to finally meet with you, Jacob. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. You guys yep. live just right up the road. We met through a mutual connection. And uh, our previous guest, Christian Montalvo, we'll give her a shout out. She's been on the show a couple of times. But hey, tell us about who you guys are, what you do, what you're involved with in the real estate investing world. Maybe you start with you, ladies first, Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. So we're a husband and wife, um, Airbnb, super host couple. Um, we still both have our W2 jobs. Um, I work as a perfusionist, which is I run the heart, lung machine and cardiac surgery. So my schedule is kind of all over the place. Sometimes it's 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sometimes it's the middle of the night. Sometimes it's just all day. Um, but now we're running um, three Airbnbs That's and right. we're building and setting up our, not building, setting up our first uh uh, not first, <laughs> our fourth one <laughs> right awesome. now down in Houston. Um, yeah. And Taylor's an attorney. Yeah. So I'm a lawyer. Uh, I work in uh, downtown Dallas and uh, I represent finance, financial institutions uh, and defend them against various lawsuits. So kind of really exciting stuff on my end. Awesome. So you guys clearly have a lot of free time on your hands. So you thought, Hey, let's get into the real estate investing world. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Too much time on our hands. Yeah. So what was your guys' foray into the real estate investing world? Was it through Airbnbs? Did you try something else first? Kind of tell us about your journey into this world. Yeah. So our first foray into the real estate investing world was uh, all the way back in 2017. Um, my mom was working in the Middle East and living in Dubai at the time. And Melissa and I were lucky enough to live at her house rent free. Well, push comes to shove and she was like, you know, you guys are both professionals making <laughs> just as much, if not more than I am. So uh, you should start paying me rent. So, uh, but it was an awesome house hack at the time. I mean, yeah, you know. it was an awesome house hack. <laughs> doesn't us. get better than yeah. that, does it? Yeah, right. we, we got away with it for as long as we could. But yeah. so she wanted us to cover the mortgage and that was about 1700 bucks. And for that price in Dallas, uh, you could live in a much, much cooler neighborhood than in Plano back in 2014, 2015. So, or 2017, excuse me. So um, we decided to move to Dallas and then we uh, decided to Airbnb her place. And she was actually the one who suggested it. And my mom, she's uh, older in age, but she, She's very hip. She's a world traveler and she's very like up on technology. So I, I didn't it. have I didn't have to talk her into going for going to yeah. the Airbnb route. She, she was, was totally on board. She's like, if you guys will do all the work, pack up my personal belongings and manage the whole thing. Absolutely. Um, and I guess we were kind of naive at the time. It didn't even cross our minds to figure out how we could make some money off of that. We were just like, sure, we'll do all the work and give you all the cash. So she loved it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it was great experience for us, virtually risk free. Yeah, so it was a good it was a good way to you know ride a bike with training wheels basically, right? There's yeah. no risk at all, and I mean it worked out really well for my mom. But eventually she moved back from the Middle East, and so we were without an Airbnb. Yeah, so time. she she ended up moving back to the house for a little bit, then sold it. 
Um, but we'd gotten great experience uh, Airbnb being that place. And then it wasn't until 2019 um, where we kind of unexpectedly again uh, got a house to Airbnb. We inherited Taylor's dad's house after he passed away. And his stepmom was actually allowed to live there for the rest of her life if she chose to, but then she decided she wanted to move out and the home was inherited by Taylor and his siblings. Well, at the time, the house was on a 15-year note? Yeah, it was on a 15-year note. So obviously the payment terms are more expensive than your standard 30-year right. note, right? So since the home cost about 2,500 bucks a month for the mortgage, that was gonna be a little rich for a long-term rental. Uh, long-term tenants would pay maybe 22, 2300 a month. So really our options were to sell the property or Airbnb it. And it was a place that my dad had, you know, kind of, I'd worked on the place my dad did renovate it. So it was something that I wanted to keep in the family. So we basically had to Airbnb it and that's what we did and got it listed starting in uh, November of 2019. Yeah, and then from there, we've had good success with that house. Mm -hmm. Um, that's been kind of an done learning journey. And then we decided to go ahead and start saving and purchase another investment property on our own, uh, which is our second house in Dallas. Um, got that up and running. And then simultaneously with that one, we got um, a friend on board who wanted us to already be his place in Houston. Those kind of got started up and running at the same time. So now we've got three going strong and we're working on the fourth. That's, that's fantastic. Let's maybe jump in the numbers if you guys don't mind. You know, there's I think there's yeah, some pretty sure. obvious advantages to doing Airbnb over a long-term rent model. Obviously, yeah. a little bit higher cash flows, but with that probably comes a little bit more labor-intensive management. You've got tenant turnover every two or three days. So maybe compare yeah. and contrast in your guys' experience the differences in Airbnb model and like the long-term rental model. Yeah, so with the Airbnb model, I mean, you really can't lie about it. It's a lot, it's a lot more work, right? So there's <laughs> guests that are incredibly picky. They're confused about how to operate the television, even though you've provided them instructions, they can't find the Wi-Fi code, even though it's all throughout the house. I mean, there's just constant inquiries you have to deal with. So mm -hmm. I wake up every morning, see if I have an Airbnb message I need to respond to and just kind of deal with things immediately throughout the day. When you're a landlord for a long-term rental and we haven't necessarily been this yet, but, but both our parents have had experience with long-term renters. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, so we've kind of seen what they dealt with in the past. The and, demands are far less urgent, right? So sure. If a toilet's busted and water's flooding the apartment, yeah, you need to respond to that immediately either way. But with an Airbnb, it's like a hotel and you want to do everything possible to get that five-star review, right? So you got to basically swallow your pride, admit the guest is right, say, yes, I'm so sorry about your issue. How can I help and do whatever? You yeah, you live and die by the reviews on Airbnb. Your search, where you pop up in search rankings is all based on how many people view it, how many people have favored it, how many five-star reviews you have, if you have that super host. And so it's incredibly important that you always maintain a five-star review if at all possible. And that typically means taking the fall for everything, jumping when a guest needs it, no matter how big or little the issue is, um, which obviously if you're in a long-term rental situation, you want to be a good landlord, but I, you're not as pressed to get those constant five-star reviews. Yeah. Yeah, sure. When you guys are looking at a new investment opportunity, do you have any kinds of like rules of thumb where you look at like, okay, this is a three bedroom, two bathroom house in this neighborhood. We think it will rent for this price on a nightly average. As such, we can offer this asking price for it. Is there any kind of rules of thumbs you guys analyze your properties by? Uh, so honestly, the rule of thumb is we're not comfortable investing in a property until we're confident that the revenue will be triple what the mortgage is. Okay. So um, that metric is actually <laughs> kind of surprisingly easy to meet with Airbnb. So for example, our first house, uh, we call it the Peacock House because it's in this wonderful little neighborhood in Dallas that has wild peacocks roaming around. Um, that house uh, looked at it and it was a two bedroom, one bath and um, the mortgage was about fourteen forty a month, of that, and we anticipated making about forty five hundred, 
4,500 a month. And we do that by looking at this tool called air DNA. Yeah. I've heard of it. Is, I've messed around yeah. with it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So they have subscription levels and you can kind of sign up and get like all sorts of data. And really the way we use it is we plug in a property address we're looking at, and then it will give us a rental projection for the year. Okay. Uh, for example, my dad's house, our first Airbnb, its annual revenue projection on AirDNA is about 37,000. Okay. Well, the way we do things, we're able to pull in about 60 per year. So air DNA to us is a little conservative. So if the numbers end up working on air DNA, we're pretty confident we can beat them. Mm -hmm. And then to us, that looks- And as a backup plan, we always do have our realtor check what rental comps in the neighborhood would be. So we could, if need be, pivot into a long-term rental in case for some reason we aren't able to Airbnb or something, you know, it's just not going as well as we had anticipated. We could always pivot um, to long-term rental if need be. Now, what are some ways you guys have been able to increase your returns over this industry, uh, this like industry average, let's call it through air DNA, or you guys just awesome host and have great response rates. Of course, I've seen Instagrams for your uh, properties. They're like beautifully decorated. What goes into, you know, being a super host? Well, yeah. so I'll take the first stab at it. Honestly, Melissa deserves a lot of credit. So <laughs> The way she designs places makes everyone basically happy as soon as they step foot inside. So that's like a huge key. So you got to make the place nice. You have to spend the money up front and you really got to make sure you're giving the guest a place to stay that's like up to your standards, you know, yeah. you don't really want to skimp on anything. So I think it's really important to try to curate an experience for your guests. They're choosing to go the Airbnb route rather than a hotel. Mm -hmm. And at a certain price point, they could be getting a very nice hotel for some of the nightly rates we're charging, but we're offering you more amenities, a different experience, something unique. Um, so I think that's really important to keep in mind. Some people choose to take their Airbnbs, you know, just a more normal, sterile, kind of like a sterile route, which is yeah. fine. Um, we're looking to generate higher incomes and make our guests enjoy their experience and therefore get us higher reviews. Um, so I, yeah, we really do that through making a space. We would a be first of all, totally fine living in very excited to visit in a place we would want to be ourselves and try to give our guests all the amenities they need, all the cooking tools, um, uh, any thoughtful touches we can put in and just, yeah, a pretty clean, um, beautiful thing when they first arrive. And then from there, really, I think the next step is what Taylor's best at is our, um, guest interactions. Yeah, so if the guests ever contact me with a question or problem, the response rate's really important on Airbnb. So Airbnb ranks your position in the search results based upon how quickly you respond. Okay. So we always try to respond within 30 minutes to an hour. Um, that's one thing. And then two, I mean, we've had, even though we have almost nothing but five-star reviews, there's been plenty of times where an issue shows up, right? But as long as you confront the issue, you're not a jerk to the guest. You deal with it. If there's a pest, I call pest control, right? So you just kind of handle issues as they come, treat the guests well, be kind and respectful. And yeah, and if, I mean, if something comes up that's significant, we never hesitate in refunding a guest for a night or I'll drop off a like, nice little gift card or a bottle of wine or a thank you note. Um, just something so you just need to really cherish that relationship you have with each guest, make them feel special, make them feel respected, make sure that they feel like their concerns matter to you. And they're really, it really pays off. Yeah. Now I know personally when I'm traveling, I love to stay in Airbnbs. And if I'm say hypothetically going to Austin, Texas or Canyon Lake, Texas, a couple of local spots here in Texas, we have, I've got my Airbnbs that I've stayed at in the past that I'll try to find for that weekend if they're available. Right. I'm sure that yeah. happens with the guests you guys have, and you've kind of got like this repeat customer base. Does that happen? Yeah, actually we uh, are having a guest check out this or He checked out already this morning at, at our uh, Herringbone house in Houston. He's a uh, repeat guest that comes back all the time. Yeah, he's probably been I, there four times yeah, already. I think just... his mom comes in town to visit a lot and he just like books our house all the time. to. Yeah, and then we have several guests that will tell us, you know, I'm coming back for this next month. Can't wait to come back and or, you know, we'll be here next year. So yeah, people, we're getting a lot of repeat customers and interest in repeat customers. 
which makes us comfortable. And I mean, they get more and more comfortable in the home every time they yeah, come. It's easier for us to <laughs> get really guests coming back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure when a lot of people think about Airbnbs, they think like weekend trips, short stays, but in fact, you know, you've got people that are on business travel for weeks mm -hmm. at a time, or maybe they're in town for a month or whatever. Do you ever have any like longer term stays? Yeah. So currently at uh, my dad's house, um, we have a guest that checked in starting March 31st and he's still there. So, so going on three they, months now? <laughs> well, going April, on, May, June. No, four. no, they must have checked in Same. March 1st. It must have been March 1st because it's at like four or five months. Now. Yeah. Okay. But basically when they first booked the place, they were like, yeah, we're home shopping. And I guess they liked the place so much that they really weren't in a rush to buy their home. So. And the DFW market right now is just like every, right? It's right. crazy. So yeah. Uh, yeah, they've had a very long house hunting journey. Luckily for them, they finally found a house. Um, but lucky for us, it was like a six month stay we got out of it. Yeah. Which sure. it made our lives easy. Yeah. Now, do you ever find that, you know, it becomes overwhelming with having to be kind of quote unquote on call 24 seven and responding to inquiries? You guys are on vacation right now. I'm sure you're married to your laptop, or your phone, you know, just checking yeah. on things, making sure things are running smoothly. Does that ever weigh on you or do you just enjoy it? Honestly, I think we truly enjoy it. And one of our favorite things is actually when we're out to dinner with friends and we get a new booking inquiry and we're like, oh yeah, three grand coming in. And we just love to be show it to our friends. We're like, you need to get on Airbnb. You need to get on Airbnb. Everybody gets an Airbnb. Yeah. You know, honestly, it drives us and excites us so much. Um, and then every once in a while, a dinner is ruined by a guest who tells <laughs> you, you know, something's wrong. Well, we've had guests accuse us of being unorganized and ask us if this is our first Airbnb. And we're like, no, that's Yeah, so some guests weird. are more needy than others. And sometimes, I mean, it's a home. Um, and so I think that's important for people looking to book Airbnbs. You have to remember, it's not a hotel. It, we don't have a whole crew. We don't have another room we can put you in or another house we can put you in. Um, just like any home, there's going to be appliances that break. There will be, you know, pests sometimes. Um, and we just a loud to, neighbor or a exact, parking exact, spot exact, exact. or like things yeah. out of oh, our gosh, control. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so more often than not, though, the constant glued to our phone thing, we kind of enjoy. And we kind of made it a habit, like Taylor said previously. We wake up every morning, first thing we do, check messages, check the calendar, make sure there's nobody we need to follow up with or any check in instructions that need to be sent out. Just make sure that, you know everything's ready to go for the day. And from that point, after our first check in the morning, unless a guest messages us, we're pretty free. Well, and another, this is kind of personal to us, but we're both almost essentially on call. She's on call for her job quite a bit. I'm kind of on call 24 seven. I mean, they don't call me 24 seven, thankfully, but theoretically I am. So it's. Yeah, um, we're kind of primed to this like idea of being ready to work at any moment. Well, yeah, you guys mentioned that. And it's like, we all are glued to our phones in some aspect or another, right? I'm being bugged by email notifications and text messages at this very moment. So it's not like, you know, an app message from Airbnb is going to ruin my day. I guess if you just kind of build your life around it and expect it, it is what it is, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly. And it's always fun when some of those annoying texts really are just money making opportunities. So yeah, right. what a terrible notification to exactly. be because you had $3,000 yeah. deposited into your account. <laughs> exactly. no, that's exactly right. Yeah. Well, you guys have gone on to, you know, do this Airbnb model for yourselves. You've had a lot of success with it. I'm sure naturally in, you know, dinner conversations and in friendly conversations, people are saying like, Hey, Taylor, Melissa, what are you guys up to? Oh, we're having a lot of luck with this Airbnb thing. And people naturally are drawn to that. Right. And they look to you like, well, how could we get started? How could we do what you're doing? You guys have started to kind of help people manage their own Airbnbs. Is that right? Exactly. Yes. So our first, um, I guess what we'd like to call a client, mm -hmm. is one of Taylor's childhood best friends, yep. Jack, who we'd been in contact with chatting about Airbnb. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he was telling me that he was actually having difficulty getting his place rented out in Houston. And uh, I asked him how much it was renting for, and he told me 2200 a month, and that's what he wasn't getting tenants for, right? And so I was like, Jack, I can knock that number out of the ballpark. I promise you I can get over four grand. I think this is super easy. And Jack just kind of had enough faith in us where he was like, okay, I'll let y'all try it. And so 
he he works on an oil rig and he's based out of Trinidad and Tobago. And so he's really inaccessible. So he really relied on us to, well, the place actually needed renovated before mm -hmm. it even got furnished. So he actually had us manage the entire renovation and then manage the entire interior decoration and then manage the whole Airbnb now. And so it's been a really sweet deal for him and for us because uh, for example, the first month, uh, the shared profit was 1200 bucks each, right? So instead of making a hundred bucks profit, which is what he used to with a normal long-term rental, uh, he made 12 times that. So <laughs> he made his yearly profit in the, in the first month with us. So it's been a really great situation. Yeah, it's an awesome uh, set up partnership because we're had no up, we've had no startup cost. He had all the startup costs, but we had all the work, and now we're both profiting equally. Yep. Um, so it's a great setup for both of us. That's so cool. So. And that's one of the things I love about real estate investing is there's so many ways to do it and so many ways to do it creatively, right? When all three of us were first getting started investing in real estate, you guys were living in your parents' house, house hacking mm -hmm. for free, right? Yep. You kind of fell into an Airbnb. We all have to get that start somewhere. And, you know, most of the time it has to come through somewhere creative. This is a great strategy for people who are trying to find that start is, hey, reach out and provide value. Maybe you're really good at interior decorating or you're very mm -hmm. great at customer service. You find the jack in your life and you say, hey, here's what I can bring to the table. And you don't even have to buy your first house. You just manage an airbnb exactly yeah, that's exactly, exactly right. and then you could be on the flip side where you could be jack where you have all this money sitting around but you don't know how to invest or you don't have the time to and so that's kind of what we're looking to do in the future is be there for those people that have the money they want to get into real estate and they want to cash flow um on airbnb but don't have the time to dedicate well we have the time and the experience now so we're just looking to do more of that and what's your guys' strategy for scaling? Because, you know, you're, you're personally running this business with the, with the outlook look like, you know, hiring people to help you, you know, field inquiries and respond to requests and things like that. Is that the path to scaling or is there any technology leverage there? Yeah. So there's actually a very uh, cool technology service called smart BNB, which allows you to schedule your messages. So we have a lot of our messages scheduled by our uh, check-in messages, our checkout messages, we all those been, repetitive things, right? Like, hey, yeah, address right. is, so, yeah. Wi-Fi code. And you can use that kind of for some common inquiries, like, you know, what's the Wi-Fi code? But uh, you can't use that necessarily for the neighbor came over and he's yelling at me, what do I do? You know, so um, smart BNB is a big help. What's funny is uh, Airbnb seems to have noticed that a bunch of people were using smart BNB. So now Airbnb's included a bunch yeah, of their features own within automated the automated messaging system. Okay. Um, so Airbnb itself is kind of making it easier to use, but. But yes, but long-term, I think we do want to get more systems in place, start hiring people that have a similar vision of, you know, making these curated Airbnb experiences. Um, and so, cause we are really, we have a lot of other people with interest and more uh, possible properties coming down the line and Taylor and I can only spread ourselves so thin <laughs> right. um, and yeah. we don't want ourselves and our, you know, our bandwidth to be the limit, rate limiting factor in growing our business. So sure. yeah. yeah, we certainly look forward to bringing on some uh, people working for us to help us with the startup, um, which currently we've been doing ourselves. And I mean, so if they're Houston ones, it's, Whatever weekends I'm not on call, we get down there. We're physically building the furniture and putting in all the sweat equity yeah. ourselves. Um, but it does slow us down because we can only get there so many weekends out of a month. Right, right. Now we kind of touched on the qualitative features or the quantitative features rather of invest of analyzing a possible Airbnb investment property. What about maybe some of those qualitative features like a three, two, a townhouse in this specific location or close to this, uh, you know, attraction or whatever. Is there things you guys look for there? Yeah. So location is really important. Um, for an Airbnb, we're more comfortable uh, putting people in at least a BC neighborhood don't want to have them come up and have to give you a poor location rating because you're in, you know, D or lower neighborhoods. So yeah, location is important in general. The neighborhood needs to be, make them feel like they're in a safe place. Uh, but more importantly, you're going to cash flow more if you're near some exciting amenities. You know, if you're near 
highways or cool neighborhoods, um, like our ones in Houston are in great neighborhoods, easy access to a lot of things. Um, our one in Dallas uh, has a, that neat feature Taylor mentioned about. It's in a yeah, neighborhood the, the peacock full of peacocks. House, right? yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that in itself is a feature people get excited about, want to come see. We tell them about the peacocks, and it's great access. Very close to the highway, very, it's close, also very to close to downtown, too, so the Dallas like, Zoo. Okay. Um, yeah, so location is absolutely important. And size wise, um, I don't think we really have it has to be one thing. I think we just run the numbers, check if it has can have this many rooms, how many people can it sleep? And if it sleeps that many people, how much can we charge a night for it? Well, I was going to say size wise, we actually try to stay away from four bedrooms or larger. Okay. Um, to me, those houses have a tendency to become party houses, mm -hmm. right? And so those are the houses. And those houses can generate a lot of money because if you're booking like bachelor parties, you can charge like 1400 1600 a night, right? But we don't really want to beat those neighbors. We're not going to just create an absolute headache for everyone in the neighborhood and give Airbnb a bad name and deal with lawsuits. And this well, that's that. another good point about when you're picking a location, you need to make sure you're always checking the rules of the city and regulations in the city. Mm -hmm. um, some neighborhoods, if they have an HOA, they won't allow it. Um, some cities have stricter rules about Airbnbs and others, or they already have um, lawsuits in place of people trying to ban Airbnb in those cities. So I would just always keep an eye out for that and make sure you're in an Airbnb friendly city um, before you get yourself into a property that eventually you won't be able to Airbnb if enough legal action is taken. Yeah, sure. that's a good point. And I think those zoning laws are always very fluid, right? Things are changing per yeah. neighborhood, per county, yeah. per city, et cetera. So definitely mm -hmm. stay on top of that. Make sure you can Airbnb the property and exactly. get into it. Let's talk about marketing. How do you guys market go above and beyond just on the platform of Airbnb. I know you guys have your Instagram pages for select houses. How else do you guys kind of draw and, and you know, drum up interest for, for these specific houses? So honestly, uh, our marketing strategy is underdeveloped at this point. Um, <laughs> no, rely... it looks pretty good <laughs> online. I mean, I've checked out I mean, the yes. Instagram pages. So we do, I do, I have started Instagram pages for some of them. I don't post as often yeah. as I should or would like to. So that might be another great staff member we'd love to hire in the future. <laughs> yeah. um, there you go. Is, uh, social media, yeah, social manager. media manager. Um, but really what we have done is we've read, um, there's a book about optimizing your Airbnb and it's written by somebody who used to actually work for Airbnb. So we've used that to just make sure we're doing absolutely everything we can to come higher and higher up in search rankings so people find us. Um, and another good tool in that one that I don't think a lot of people know about is making your place pet friendly. Oh, yeah. A lot of millennials love travel, we love traveling with their dogs. We don't go anywhere without our dogs if at all possible. They're going to be in our wedding next year. I mean, they're with us everywhere. So we want to make sure other people can bring their dogs also. And if you check that box when people are searching, you're going to come up and there's a smaller pool now people are having to choose from and yours is hopefully one of them. Yes. And to that point, it's more than just checking a box, right? It's actually about making sure it literally is pet friendly. So we provide dog bags, dog bowls, a little yeah, yeah. station for yeah. dogs to feed. So I mean, it's actually pet friendly. Well, I have to ask, you know, you guys are a husband and wife tandem tag team duo here. You kind of touched a little bit on your roles and responsibilities each, which kind of your strengths and weaknesses are, but can you just elaborate a little bit like, you know, who does what and kind of the day to day and who brings what to the table? So I'd say startup. Um, really, it all starts with me. Once we find the property or, you know, we've figured out which town home of Jack's we're <laughs> going to work on next, um, I start making designs. So I decide okay. what the theme of this home is. I create designs um, for each and every room. And then I start mass ordering <laughs> everything. And so that's really my niche is creating, kind of curating the experience, the design, um, the vision for the home uh, that people will like. And I really just base that off of what am I looking for? What are me and my friends looking for when we go booking a place? What stands out about um, the Airbnbs I have booked, I look for? Um, and you can do that too, just scrolling Airbnb, which ones stand out to you and why? And which one would you book? So I try to create something I would personally want to book. And so that's where really I come in is the front end uh, setting up the place. Yeah, finding and setting up the place. And 
uh, I come in more on the back end where I do most of the communication with the guests, most of the um, communication with maintenance people, communication with, I mean, whoever. So I'm kind of the outward facing uh, person of our team. But um, yeah, Melissa, Melissa's role is absolutely critical because without her, the places wouldn't look very good at all. And I just wouldn't have a successful Airbnb operation. So Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, real estate, no matter what you do in real estate, it's a team sport, right? It always takes so many hats to accomplish the goal, whether that's like you say, you know, decorating and curating the design, which if you asked me to do, you would just get blank walls and some spoons. And <laughs> yeah. you're like, I'm, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be the bare essential. It's going to be right. what, you, what you call it, Melissa, the um, sterile, sterile approach. Sterile. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be me. Yeah. It's like a hospital room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, no, it's, it's good to see, you know, what you guys both bring, because like we say, real estate investing is a team sport and, you know, everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses. Let's talk about your reasons why you guys were both busy professionals still are, but at one point we're busy professionals and decided to take on this Airbnb. And it wasn't because you had all this spare time to kill. What kind of drew you guys to, you know, wanting to do this and then, you know, instead of coming home and watching Netflix and hanging out and going out with friends instead, you know, investing in yourselves and investing this time into growing your business. Um, yeah. So it's financial independence ultimate goal. Uh, we want more time, more freedom. Um, I'm on call a lot. Uh, it was difficult to just schedule a podcast interview with you. Um, so yeah, just to gain that time back, we have the means to do a lot right now, the means to travel, but we don't have the time to do as much as we'd like to. And as we grow a family in the future, we want to spend more time with them and, uh, yeah, just become financially independent and have more time to ourselves. Yeah. So we're, we're doing okay on the active income front. It's just the passive income front that we're really interested in. That's kind of why we started pursuing Airbnb. It was also, I mean, it was also from a place of necessity, if you will, right? Like I needed to find a way to keep my dad's house and the family. So we found that. And then after, so we listed it in November of 2019, fast forward three, four months, COVID hit, right? So March and April of 2020 were just awful months for us. Like we had to come out of pocket at, at each month. Um, all eight of our bookings canceled. So it was just kind of a train wreck and we were really kind of having second thoughts. But then bookings picked up in May when Texas started opening back up. And then come July, August, me and Melissa were like, wow, this is cash flowing an awesome amount. Where's our next Airbnb? Yeah, so, that was really like the big light bulb moment for us. It's like, this is going great. And the time we're putting into it is not nearly as much as the money we're getting like if we're it. doing this well two months post pan it wasn't post pandemic then but two months after the texas lockdown right we were like okay well i'm pretty sure we'll be profitable every month in the future now like it can't get much worse than march and april of 2020 so yeah no, that's awesome so overall you think you know there's a little bit of a blip on the financial radar for airbnbs kind of early mm -hmm. covid but now things seem to be well i know from a personal like consumer standpoint when i go to book something it seems like things are really booked up there's very little availability so i think people have an appetite for traveling they've got a lot of pent up demand and maybe people aren't getting on flights to fly across the country to the San Diego's or Nashville's of the world, but rather taking that three hour drive to the, you know, outside of their home city or something. Right. So. Absolutely. And even during COVID um, we had some people just going on staycations. They're like, I live in a tiny apartment. I need to get out of my house. I need to see different yeah. walls. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, even during the worst of it all, we did get a couple bookings still. So Awesome. Well, guys, it's been a lot of fun talking with you about your Airbnb business. Let's go ahead and wrap up with a lightning round, just a series of questions we fire at you. Are you up for it? Yeah. yeah. For you sure. can choose how you want to respond on both of you, either or. But the first question is, what was your biggest hurdle getting started investing in real estate? And then what did you do to overcome that? So actually, I'm going to say the biggest hurdle for us was me getting Melissa fully on board. So she's I'm more of an idealistic type of guy and she's more pragmatic. And so she really wasn't comfortable getting that second property. Um, basically she wanted, she wants to be sure that we can always pay the bills for each of our properties. Right. And so that was kind of a delay for us expanding because 
you know, you can't always afford all your mortgages yeah. based off your current W-2 salary. You know, I'll admit, so. I'm very risk averse. So yeah. it took me a little time to get on board. Um, but now loving it and we're kind of knocking it out of the ballpark. Yeah, so gosh, I don't, yeah, fully on board and can't wait to get the next one. I love it. Do you, either of you have a personal habit that contributes to your uh, success? Yeah. So I do what's called bullet journaling, um, which is basically you make, it's more like a task-based journal. So okay. every single day I make a list, I make prioritize a list, a task, um, or there'll be migrating tasks from the previous day I didn't get done. Um, so I'm very obsessed with listing and prioritizing things, which is, I think, insanely important with us both having such busy and demanding jobs on top of Airbnb. Um, so yeah, I don't let us do a single thing without a list. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. How about you, Taylor? Uh, so the habit that I find most important is actually getting up in the morning and getting on the Peloton. So I found that the days that I get up, get my workout in by 7 a.m., I'm just far more productive those days. I feel like I'm a rock star on those days and the other days I'm just below average. So it's just like getting up and getting going is kind of the key for me. Totally, totally. Do you guys, either of you have an online resource you find valuable in your day to day? Yeah, so we manage all our properties on Stessa. Oh, I love Stessa. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Stessa's awesome. yeah. Stessa's been awesome. And then uh, Price Labs Price is Labs our is pri favorite good. pricing tool. Yeah. Okay. So we used to use Beyond Pricing before, but Beyond Pricing would charge you 20 bucks per property, whereas Price Labs has a scaling. Actually, no. Beyond Pricing charged you 1% of all bookings. So when we had our first $6,000 a month and their amount <laughs> jumped up from 20 to 60 bucks, that was pretty steep. So we've switched from uh, beyond pricing to Price Labs. Price Labs is really good for our pricing software and it really kind of optimizes our revenue. So that's Stessa and Price Labs. Price I'm Labs, very familiar yeah. with Stessa. We'll link both of those in the show notes for audience members that maybe aren't familiar with Stessa. We had the vice president of Stessa on the podcast, Devin oh, Redmond. Wow. Super great guy. Awesome software, as you and I both know, Taylor yeah. and Melissa. It's a property uh, management slash accounting software where you can keep track of all your income and expenses. To me, it makes the biggest difference come tax time and oh, yeah. makes those generating those tax reports so much easier than dealing Absolutely. with sell or shoebox full of receipts or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. awesome. Next question. What book would you recommend to the listeners and why? So uh, the book I'd recommend is actually, I will teach you to be rich. Um, it's kind of oh, yeah, by Ramit so Safety. Yeah, I feel like he's not as into real estate as we are, right? Yeah. But I think this it's just really good for beginners. It helps you kind of have a proper mindset towards money. It helps you not be overwhelmed by it. It kind of breaks it down into easy, actionable steps within the next, I, I think it was like a six-week program or mm -hmm. four-week yeah. program or something. And I just thought it was a great, like way to think about money. There's There's a test at the start of it where he goes, what would your rich life be? Describe your rich life. And Melissa and I have kind of sat down multiple times and that's kind of the lens that we look at a lot of our decisions. It's like, is this something we want to be doing in our rich life, you know? And that's Yeah, and that's exactly. Decisions. Every goal we, every time we sit down and make goals, it starts with, okay, let's go back and revisit what we discussed. Our rich life looks like, how do we want to live our lives and how are we going to get there? What's our step-by-step -step process to reach those goals and create that life we want? I love it. Yeah, that was my, one of my big takeaways from that book as well. And like you said, maybe he's not he's not the real estate guy, right? He's not like yeah. who you look to for real estate advice, but I've got a copy of the book here for people mm -hmm. watching on YouTube. It's called I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Yep. Super cool guy. Definitely recommend it. We'll link it in the show notes. Melissa Taylor, last question in the lightning round. If you were to go back and give advice to your 20-year-old selves to get started investing in real estate, what would you tell 20-year-old Melissa, 20-year-old Taylor? Um, honestly, I think it would just be to rethink our approach to our careers and not saying we don't love our careers, but and how you look at debt and student loans. Um, I luckily got a scholarship to college, so I didn't have undergrad student loans, but I do have loans from grad school. Um, and honestly, rethink maybe there's a smarter, better way to not get yourself into debt. Yeah. And honestly, just get started in real estate as young as you can. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to say, too, is so I went to undergrad in New York 
York City in grad school in LA. And I just so desperately wish my parents would have helped me buy a place in each one of those places oh, in, yeah. 08, in 2012, because I mean, we'd be, we would have had this conversation years ago. So yeah, I just wish yeah. we could have gotten started younger. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's a resounding uh, kind of feeling with many people is, you know, once they find this awesome world, they just thought, wow, like, why didn't I do this sooner? And same for mm -hmm. me. So well, guys, hey, it's been a fun conversation. Before we wrap up, you know, what does the future hold for you guys? What are your guys' future goals? Is it to stay in the Airbnb world? Do you guys want to branch out and do something different? Is this a means to a, a next step? What's what's the future look like for you guys? So kind of tough question. I mean, for the immediate future, our goal is to get to 20 properties under management by okay. the end of 2022. So that's... Um, our immediate goal, our big long-term goals. I don't know if we've really kind of set an upper limit on those or. Yeah, I don't think we have a specific number of how many properties we want, but we want to grow our Airbnb management business. Um, I don't know, maybe long-term we'll be, get to a point where we can be less and less hands-on, but for the time being, um, yeah, we're looking to continue to obtain properties and maybe uh, start hiring some people to help us out with yep. those. And yeah, just keep growing the business. Awesome. It's always hard when somebody asks you what your long-term goals are, because I don't know about you guys, but me, they're always kind of fluid. They're changing and it's, exactly. got all they these categories. So, exactly. yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, if people want to reach out with you, connect with you, ask you questions, where's the best place for them to find you? Sure. So we actually just started our um, Instagram account for our Airbnb management company called Stay With Me. Um, and then you can also find us uh, on the Bigger Pockets forums. And um, our email is meekresidential at gmail.com. Yep. If you have awesome. any questions or anybody wants to yep. chat. That's Instagram at stay with me. Yeah. Okay, great. We'll link all those profiles, including your bigger pockets profile, your Instagram profile, all in the show notes. If the audience members want to reach out, connect with you, follow you, check out those cool Instagram uh, pages for like the Peacock House and et cetera. Yeah. So Taylor, Melissa, as we're wrapping up here, is there anything I should have asked you, any parting piece of advice that you'd like to leave with the audience members? Just get started. Yeah, just I think you can started. listen to as many podcasts and read as many books as you want, but you just got to go for it at some point. I love it. Exactly. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming on the show today. We'll have you back on at the end of 2022 to talk about those 20 Airbnbs you <laughs> oh, have yeah. under awesome. management. Until then, keep crushing it. Cool. Awesome. Can't thanks, wait. Jacob. Thanks, Jacob. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Thanks for having us. All right, that wraps up this week's episode with our guest, Melissa and Taylor Meek. Hey, I hope you got so much value from that podcast. I don't know about you, but I find the short-term rental, uh, let's call it uh, model, if you will, very interesting. And I think it's going to continue to grow in the future as we become a renter nation. We like to rent everything from our cars to our homes, to our experiences, to our vacations, etc. So I really find a lot of value in this model. And they're gonna be some people I continue to watch as I learn and grow on my own journey. So if you wanna do the same, you can follow them by clicking all of the links in the show notes where you can find their social media profiles and all of their contact information. Well, hey, until next week, engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have a potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom, LLC, exclusively.